Praise God. Good morning. God bless you. God keep you. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. I pray that you are having a blessed day in the morning. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Well, you see my title, which is a, a touchy title and actually a touchy subject as well. So I'm going to try to dig in there and explain some things to you. And I'm going to start off first with scripture. Um, what I said is stop marrying people who are not safe. They cannot handle your, their mat, your mantle. All right. So let me go with scripture first. So, cause I, I think people are not, let me clarify something. I'm not coming up against marriage because God loves marriage, but you know, the devil hates marriage. So what I'm saying is it all depends on what, how much you're, how much you're willing to handle. <laughs> so let me start with scripture first. Like I said, I'm in first Corinthians and I'm starting um, uh, first Corinthians seven chapter, and I'm going to start actually at 11. All right. Uh, actually, no, no, no. I'm going to start at 13 because that's where I'm going with this 13. And the woman, which hath an husband that believe it not. And if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. Verse 14. This is the main scripture. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Were your children unclean, but now they are holy. All right, now let's go verse 15. But if the unbelieving husband depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. All right, so basically here's what I'm saying. By scripture, yeah, you marry who you want to marry. And that is called, is that's called permissive will. But the true will of God, the original, and I know people say, well, we're not under the old law. But do you understand what's happening? When you marry somebody that's not saved. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm talking to some of y'all that did it. It could be four years, two years, three years, 20 years, 40 years. I want to ask you one question. And I want you to be honest with yourselves. How much hell have you been through for a little heaven? Don't start playing with me. How much hell did you have to go through and still going through for that little taste of heaven? Whether it was the sex that made you marry him, whether it was the family liking each other, whether it was the credit score, whether it was pastor, preacher, teacher, put y'all together, whether it was attraction, a good sex, whatever the case may be, it is very detrimental to your calling. You know, uh, and I, I'm going to use myself as an example, which is the perfect example, right? When I told you when I got married and I shouldn't have, I never forget upon leaving, this is what happened. And you have to understand, people came to me, well, you know, you're not supposed to divorce. You're not supposed to. And I went straight to God. I went straight to God. I said, God, what do you say? And I never forget what God said, people. Listen to me very carefully. God said, Deanna. You will never be who I've called you to be if you stay with him. I'm going to say that one more time. I went to God and I asked God. God said, Deanna, you will never be who I've called you to be if you stay with him. And I knew that was true. Because here's the deal. When you're mad with the wrong person, the enemy can use them against you. And you're so busy because you're in love. You're trying to make them happy. You negate what God have called you to do. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. There's scripture saying that too. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Where you start getting so entangled with the marriage until you forget who God is. You forget what God said. You forget what God are danger for. It is very important, especially if you have a calling to be on the same page. I'm not saying perfect because there's nobody that's perfect. But let's talk this thing out. My ex-husband, he used, we used to actually uh, perform together. You know, he was a singer, so... It was just so many parallels to this. And one day we was having a conversation and, and I'm going to be transparent because y'all need this more and more. Well, when we would get through uh, performing or ministering, whichever one y'all want to call it, we would get home and he would pop open a beer and light a joint. And one day I got tired of it. And I said, I said, bro, you playing. What you mean? I said, you fake. I said, for that, I'm not performing with you anymore. That's how our marriage started crumbling. I said, you're fake. You're playing with God. Well, I, I, I love God. Do you think you God? He started telling me that I, I thought I was God. So when people start talking like that, I'm leery of you because I'm not saying I'm equated with God, but I'm saying I don't play with God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You want to do this your way. So, so, so let me get this straight. You don't mind ministering before people, but in public, but in private, you want to. 
y'all coming where I'm y'all going where I'm going. I see so many husbands. Sometimes they go to different churches. Let's say the hus the husband goes to one church, the wife goes to the other church. The Bible says, let's go, let's go with scripture. Do not be unequally yoked. That's the same thing I'm saying, people. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Can somebody put up that scripture? Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Don't you understand that when you marry somebody that don't have the same love for God that you do, you're about to go through some stuff. I went through it. You can't tell me nothing. You cannot tell me anything because I went through it firsthand. Thank you, Lord. I hear you. And women, you, this is what you think. <laughs> I got to go. I got to be a little something. Y'all think y'all got the best stuff in the world. Yeah, I'm going here. I ch I'm going to change him. Baby, you can't change nobody that don't want to be changed. All you and, and sex do not make a man change. I don't care how good you think it feel. Yeah, I'm going here because y'all a trip with that. Girl, I, whatever. That only lasts for a little while, sister. That only lasts for a little while, man. Because some of you men do the same thing. Y'all get big booty, trudy, and y'all y'all so engaged with the sex until y'all don't understand she don't know how to clean. Y'all don't understand she, she ain't trying to cook for you. She'll pop the microwave dinners in there real quick. Talk about, boy, you better, you better eat this. Quit marrying people that God did not tell you to marry. That's where I'm coming from. Stop. The Bible says in, in James chapter 1, you pierce your own self with sorrow because you don't want to be alone. Can I tell you something? And, and that's a lie from the pits of hell when people say, well, two halves make a whole. No. In order to truly have a successful marriage, you got to be whole all by yourself. That means you got to be working on you. That means you got to love you. If you don't like you, why you want to marry somebody? And, and they're supposed to like you too. I just said something. Or better yet, this is what I want every last one of y'all to do. I want you to write down your weaknesses and your strengths. And then I want you to write down your flaws. If you don't want to deal with you, why in the heck would you ask somebody else to? Because here's the deal. And I'm going here. You guys thinking and you women thinking that y'all could change people with your money, your looks, crooks and hooks. Don't act like y'all don't know what I'm saying. So soon as you get to that altar, don't you know if there was a liar when you married them at the altar, they're going to be a liar afterwards? Don't you know if there was a pervert when you married them at the altar, they're going to be a pervert afterwards? I'm saying something. Don't you know if there was adultery when you married them, they gonna, they were sinning. Don't you know they're going to... Let me tell you something. Thank you, Jesus. The reason why God says do not be yoked with unbelievers is because of this. They don't believe what you believe. They haven't renewed their mind. They, let me tell you something. And I'm going to try to shorten this. If they're not truly surrendered, if anyone, listen to me very carefully. If you are not truly surrendered by the unction of the Holy Ghost, you are capable of anything. I'm going to say it again. If you do not. Have a relationship with God and he can rule over your life as your Lord and Savior. You are capable of anything. And that's what's happening. Y'all are marrying people that are capable of anything. And then when it happened, well, I don't understand. Or I don't under You understood. You understood. You saw the signs. But we, this is what we do. I love them. I'm going to wait on them. I'm going to give them a chance. I'm telling you right now, God is requiring people to have standards again. Some of that stuff we cause ourselves. Let me tell you something. I can, I can, I can blame on my past, being molested, going through all that stuff. No, in 2012, I did that to Deanna. I did not listen, and I got what I got, and I almost lost my life. Like I said, that stuff is real. I don't blame anybody but myself. And but now here's the difference. Oh, my old computer went off, huh? So here, here's the difference though. What I did. I said, God, I did this. I said, so teach me not to ever do this again. As a matter of fact, I got to be very transparent because y'all need this. This is where I'm at right now. And I'm not kidding because y'all women and men need to hear this. I said, God, I don't know how to choose. I said, I don't know what happened to me. I said, but first of all, heal me. Heal me so when I do find the next one, or better yet, when you put us together, he don't go through what the other one put me through. I just said something. Because some of y'all be making people pay for what you went through. Y'all don't, you, most of you don't trust, and then you marry, and you don't trust. Most of you, y'all you, 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 get it. Oh, I'm, I'm going deep with this one. 
So I asked God, I said, God, you put it together next time and just let me know by confirmation. I said, I'm not even going to try. I said, and here, here's the deal. You know how y'all like to have y'all little list and standards of what y'all want? I even threw that out. I said, God, you give me what you want. Even if it's not something that I would say, okay, he fine, this is what I want. I said, whoever you pick in this next go around, hold on. If there be a next go, go around, because you got to you give everything to God. Just let me know and I will do what you have said because you know what I need. You know what I want. You know what's going to build me up. Oh, I'm, I'm going somewhere. Most of you are with people. And again, I'm not, you know, what some people are saying all this crazy stuff. You're not listening to what I'm saying. Then be quiet because ain't nobody coming against marriage. I'm coming against who you marry if it's not of God because we're piercing ourselves. God is tired of us. Don't you understand when you're in something that's not of God? It affects every area of your life, your family, your children, your job. Don't tell me because let me, let's be real. Let's be real. Let's be real. Money good, but honey better. Oh, y'all going to play with me up in here this morning. Honey, you'll be in church talking about hallelujah. And they thinking you talking about God, but you thinking about your husband. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. Love is more powerful than any other spirit on this earth. That's why people do what they do. That's why they, they sex trafficking. That's why they pedophiles. I don't care what kind of job you have. It's about love or lust all the time. That's what it begin with. That's what it end with. Point blank in the story. So if your love life is jacked up, I promise you, people will notice it at work, at church, in the home. Don't start. Y'all know it's true. So that's how pivotal it is that you marry who God have ordained for you and understand and wait. Because a lot of people don't like to wait. And that's because you have a form, a thing, a spirit of lust. But when you ask God, God, keep my flesh. God, keep my mind. God, keep my spirit. God, keep me. Then God knows how to keep you. God, renew my mind. Let me see what I'm supposed to want, how I'm supposed to want it. Because here's the deal. I'm going deep with this one. Some of the things that we've been through in other relationships... You bring it into your marriage. And then now you start comparing. Well, the last one had better sex. The last one did this. The la- How many of y'all go through that? That's because guess what? It's called soul ties. You were never delivered. Before you get married or even in another relationship, you got to ask God, God, make sure, help me get delivered and healed from what I went through. I just said something. Y'all don't pray that prayer. Before I go into anything else, God, make sure that I am healed and delivered in that area so I don't put him or her through what I went through. That's why a lot of marriages are messed up too. Y'all keep, well, in college I had, nobody want to know what you had. Your, your husband, whoever you're married to today, is not supposed to hear about another man or another woman. But y'all will throw that up in somebody's face. Come on, somebody. Or secretly, or I'm going here. I don't know why God got me going so deep. Have you ever, oh, Lord, have mercy. This deep, y'all. Have you ever been married? I'm going here. And you've been making love. And you start thinking about another person. You want to know why? Because <laughs> you were never delivered from that soul tie. So now you start comparing your husband or your wife with your ex. And that's what causes problems. That's what causes adultery. That's what causes cheating. That's what causes... Y'all, y'all get what I'm saying. Don't play with me. I'm grown. And I know what I know. You have to ask God to purify my mind. Purify my heart. Purify my spirit because I'm telling you it's going to cause troubles in your marriage. Another thing, husband and wives, you ain't supposed to let nobody get close to you. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Let's say you're on a job because that's, that's where y'all get it at on your job mostly. Somebody start being your friend, a woman to a man. You ain't supposed to let her get closer than your wife and then you want, oh, you be, you, you insecure, you jealous. No, Negro. Oh, I didn't say it, Negro. Y'all I didn't mean to say it. I didn't mean to say that. I can't take it back. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, forgive me, y'all. Forgive me. Because I, you know, I don't want nobody to say that, you know, I'm acting out of order, but it just came out. There it is. But no, you're wrong for that. Husband and wives. You ain't supposed to let nobody get close to you. Women. Man on your job. Whispering in your ear. <laughs> you ain't supposed to let that happen. And y'all wonder why y'all having problems. 
You're supposed to be best friends with the person that you're in love with, was supposed to be your husband or wife or if or your fiance. I'm not talking to fornicators. I'm not talking to adulterers. I'm not talking to um people out in, in the world still be sleeping together. I'm not talking to you. I start to call y'all, which y'all really are. I, I'm not talking to y'all, okay? I'm not talking to y'all. I'm talking to grown folk who are engaged and not having sex, preferably, are those that are married. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Y'all know I'm on one. I'm on one. So, truth be told, so now you got all these things. Even at church, y'all sitting up there flirting in church, the opposite sex. What am I saying? If y'all go back to respecting each other, y'all would have a successful marriage. But it starts with, God, is this the person? When y'all, and to be honest with you, thank you, Lord, I hear you. You got to go back to courting. What is courting? Getting to know people. Ask questions. Do you want children? Some of y'all marrying people that don't want children. And then, do y'all understand how husband and wives are killing each other? This is how. Or committing adultery or cheating. Because you didn't ask the questions that you needed to ask. Do you want to live in this state? Do you want to? You got to be equally yoked. That's what I'm trying to say. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. Stop marrying people that are not saved. That don't love your God. Because if they don't love your God. You know Solomon. That's how Solomon fell y'all. God kept telling him. Quit taking strange wives. What he meant is. People that don't have a covenant with me. They're going to turn you. That's what Jezebel did. Jezebel came, and that's why all the Christians, you know, th- this is biblical principles. And she said, oh, it's all right to serve Bilal and God. That's what they're doing in these days and age. That's what this new world one religion. It's okay to serve God and do this and do that. Not, not the God I serve. It's not okay. He said, thou should have no other gods before me. Thou should not have ours before me. Come on, somebody, Hallelujah. Let me tell you something, how serious this thing is. You have to have standards. You have to have values. Facebook got a lot of y'all tripping. If somebody come into your inbox and ain't your husband and your wife, you're supposed to tell them, look, I'm married. But I'm, oh, I hear you, God. God said y'all like the attention. Oh, I still got it. I still got it. Ooh, sh- child, stop. Stop. Because if you ain't getting the, the love from your husband and your wife, or your wife, then you, you you should tell them. So you know, baby, you haven't um you haven't complimented me in a while. Communication is your best friend, people. But when you stop communicating, that's when the enemy said, "Ooh, I got him now. I could send somebody. I could do this. I could do that." And the same thing I'm telling you, I've been through. You know, I know my husband was not the ordained husband, but I tried so hard with the same principles that I'm telling y'all. I would sit him down, even when he was cheating. I said, you think I don't know that you're doing stuff? I said, but I'm trying to give you a chance. That man would not stop. Now, when I love, then they get mad. Oh, oh, I'm going somewhere for you that you all that's cheating. Y'all know y'all got something good, but y'all be thinking people are never leave. Mm, I'm going somewhere. Then you want to get mad when they do. Oh, I'm going somewhere. Another thing. When you meet somebody, be their friend first. You ain't got to always jump jump in bed. You ain't always got to just move so fast. Get to know people. Get to know their spirit. Get to know their family. If they have generational curses. We all do. Let's be real. But are you willing to go through that? Are you willing to accept that? No. Can you handle that? I just said something. You know, somebody somebody was telling me something. As a matter of fact, they've been telling me that my whole life. They say, girl, whoever you marry, he's going to have to be, yeah, he's going to have to be strong because I carry a heavy mantle. He can be fine. He can be all this stuff. But if he can't handle my mantle, if he can't gird me in the spirit, you see, anybody, oh, I'm going here. Anybody can make love. Anybody could buy a house. Anybody could buy a car. Anybody could live like the Jones. But honey, can you pray with me at two, three o'clock in the morning when I'm being attacked in my body? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Can you pray with me two or three o'clock in the morning with my family going through? When I told you going through, when we going through, hallelujah, I just said something. That's where it counts. Can you pray with me? Can you labor with me? Hallelujah. Can you love me when I'm sad? Can you love me when I'm, when, when things don't, when, let's say you lose a job or something. Don't, y'all don't understand. There's so much conditional love today. As long as you, you're doing the right thing, lose that job. Oh, oh, they start to funny. 
lose a car, lose a house. Ooh, that's when you find what you really marriage is really made of, huh? You got to have so much love that, baby, if we live in an apartment, I'm happy. If we live in a two-story, I'm happy. Y'all ain't ready for me up in here. Some people only mess with you because conditional of where you're at. Now, y'all wondering why those stars get divorced back and forth, back and forth? Because as soon as their career, as soon as, you see, everybody love you when you're at the top. Come on, somebody, I'm saying something. Everybody love you when things are good. But what about when they're not? That's when you know who love you. Y'all want to know how somebody love you? If they can love you with nothing. If they can love you when you're going through. If they can love you if something happened. You don't know how many marriages where let's say the person got in a car wreck and they got paralyzed. And yet their significant other left them. Can you imagine how detriment they must have felt? My God, my God, that stuff real. The vows don't mean nothing to people these days. Y'all notice I've been on this subject. Because God wants people to take it seriously. God wants y'all to stop killing each other. Stop hurting each other. And, and I'm going to tell you this. I'm not going to stay long on this subject. Because that's another thing. And everybody likes to be so deep. Well, God only talked to me today. You know, all deep. No, it ain't that deep. Jesus was simple and real. And that's how I'm going to keep it. And I'm going to end it with this. If they are not building you up. Then they are tearing you down. God did not ordain that. I don't care what you say. God will never send something to tear you down. But the devil would. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. All right, everybody. Boy, the whole phone then fell. Y'all saw that? The devil, I, he, he first tried to make the computer go off. My phone ain't never dropped out of my hand. I mean, it just dropped out of nowhere just now. That was crazy. But anyway, yeah, I know they don't like this because devil hates marriages. He hates it because that's a powerful force. That's why God helped me on it. It's a powerful force. Y'all don't hear me. It's powerful, y'all. I'm talking about, especially if you got a, a ministry together, you can tear up. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the power of God. You could do some things together. Hallelujah. But if you're not on one of the call, you could tear up and hurt a lot of people. Don't y'all see? And God wants y'all to stop it, Stop just taking it lightly. Even friendships, stop taking stuff lightly. Don't you know when God bless you, that's a gift. When he give you something, that's a gift. When he give you somebody, that's a gift. You know what some of y'all do? Y'all do a Cain and Abel. Abel gave God what he wanted. Cain just threw him something. Here. And that's what y'all do. I don't want this. I don't want that. And I'm going to leave y'all with this. It may not come in a package that you that you want. Some of y'all have dismissed your true husband and wives because it didn't come in the package that you thought it should. Oh, they're not fine enough. They ain't got this. They ain't got that. Now you're suffering. And I'm just being real. I rebuke it, but I'm just telling you the truth. Y'all know it's the truth. You going through it. Talking about I wish I should have and could have and would have. You have to have enough God in you to say, God, I want what you want. And let me see them how you see them. And that's it. You got to see God how, you got to see people as how God see people. You see right now, I'm using myself. When I was 16, I'm, I heard it all the time. Oh, that's a little no good girl. She ain't going to be nothing. I heard it. Even family. You don't know how it hurt my heart. Um, even by people I love. They saw what I was doing. But they didn't see where God was taking me. I'm, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Y'all count people out because of what they're doing and where they're at now. Y'all don't see where God taking them. You have to have tunnel vision. God, show me what you see. Show me what you know, God. Hallelujah. This stuff is real. Woo. All right, you guys. Let me get up off of here. God bless you. God keep you. I'm coming. I'm coming with some hard stuff. Y'all don't know I've been coming lately? <laughs> that's, that's why you think they filmed me. They're trying to put me in fear. They don't like They don't like the mandate over my life. They don't like the mandate over you all. The devil is here. And God said, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil is among you. Well, you know what I say? And I mean this with a fiber of my heart. Until I leave this earth, I'm going to bring that fire. That's right. Because here's the deal. Are you going to live for God or are you going to live for the devil? There is no in between. You can play crazy if you want to. And you can't do this without God. Who possess your soul for real? Come on, somebody. Who really own you? God or the devil? And how you know that's the one you serve? 
All right now. God bless you. God keep you. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Roll out soldiers for that is who you are. God bless.